Brandon Crawford, DJ BC Raw. Used He's to, tearing it up in St. Louis. Is he? I haven't even looked. He's had like eight at bats, <laughs> something like that. He doesn't even play. What well, are they doing? Uh, who the Cardinals? Yeah, or, or the, the Crawford Cardinals. family? No, the Cardinals. I mean, well, they didn't get him to be a like. He's just a piece. Like he's just a backup. That's if all that, he, though, yeah, but that's all he was going to be here, right? But I bring him up because um, I used to be in the Giants clubhouse almost every night in their one one hundred seven win season. Um, yeah, things haven't gone well for them since. But anyway, um, DJ BC Raw is in charge of the music. And, He's one for 11. Um, Sorry, oh, 11 at best. So he now has one career hit not on the Giants. Correct. Okay. Two walks and five punchies. Was it a single or a double or a triple? He has no doubles, no triples, no homers. Okay, so so I will a, extrapolate. It was a bingle. Yeah. So Brandon used to have a specific song that would start his playlist whenever the Giants won. And it was by Ariana Grande. And I bet you know damn well which song it was. Yeah. Go ahead, Dibs. Probably Thank You Next. That's exactly right. Yeah. This is his way of saying, we beat you. Thank you. Next. And as we have now graduated into the post-Brandon Crawford era, because he is one of the examples of what we're talking about today, um, what an appropriate song to be played by a guy who ended up being one of those guys. Thank you. Next, so Crawford, Posey, uh, Belt, Steph, Clay, Dre, might we get there soon with Kittle or Trent Williams? Trent Williams. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm mostly going homegrown people here, but no, but he'll he'll be you know there. What I'm saying, yeah, like these are really hard decisions that you have to make. And sometimes I come down on fan bases ourselves because we do build an unfair puzzle for the team to figure out, which is when you win, you just want everybody back. Two years ago, we sat in the parade and everybody wanted everybody back. There were tears in the audience because G to the P to the two was leaving. And oh God, how dare they? How could they let him go? He's a champion. You want everyone back, and then they do it, and they stink, and you yell at them for bringing them back. And that is the cycle that happens. So to me, that's where we are in Warriorville right now and the number one conversation for us all to have. Thank you, contract. Yes or no? Steph, put that aside. That's been signed for a while, plus he's Steph. Yep. Draymond, it's too late. You already signed it. However... There are ways out of it. Yeah. And Clay I was against it from the start. Yes, you were. And Clay Thompson sits here right now at the fork in the road. Thank you, contract. Yes or no? Well, it depends on what it's going to uh, be. And it also depends on what it either allows you to do or prevents you from doing. Well, that's if the it's important part. Well, yeah. Who if, cares how much it is? Not my money. Well, it, it matters if they can't sign anyone else. Correct. So if Which they, they're not going to do. They're right. Do that. Well, then, then it's a no on the thank you contract because Clay's going to be able to get more than what they could pay him and still allow themselves to do in the open market. So, if you wanted to keep Clay and have the ability to go out and sign somebody else, he'd make twelve million a year, and he's not signing for twelve million a year. That's not happening. Well, I don't know that he's even going to get the offer he reportedly already turned down elsewhere, anywhere. Two and forty-eight. I don't know if he's going to get that anywhere. Well, I think he will. Maybe. I think he will. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, is Bobby at 315? Is that what we're doing? Okay. Bobby Marks, for my money, is the foremost NBA contract expert out there, period. So if you want to know what the Warriors can do, in addition to what the Warriors probably should do, what's the going rate for XYZ? Who could you trade Chris Paul for? How does that contract work? If you want the answers to all of those questions, one hour from right now on this station, on this show, Bobby Marks. There is no voice I would rather have today in the world than him, and he's here. So that's exciting. Plus, we have everything that's been said, not only by Steve Kerr on this show yesterday, Mike Dunleavy earlier. All of it is very, very important and so we'll be talking it out, and we're always open to you, 888-957-9570. And I do think that this is one of those days, one of those times. Um, 
an organization rarely is doing things because the fans feel a certain way. But make no mistake, uh, organizations dip their toe in the public waters to know how people re- will react to things. Like, why do you think sometimes when there's a suspension, like take Draymond Green, why does it take till 5 o'clock the next day? Right. They all got to work at 8 in the morning. It's the first damn thing they're talking about. But part of it is they want to know what's the discourse. Okay, what if we do this? What will people say? What if we do that? So the Warriors are definitely, and they've got extra time this offseason as it turns out. So the Warriors are in information gathering mode, which is what is available to us around the league. And how would our customers feel if we fill in blank? So I think that, to me, historically, if you look at the idea of thank you contracts, it is a very difficult question to answer. I know a lot of you will act like it's not. It really is. I know a lot of hardcore Warrior fans right now are like, we're hardened, we're ready. Yeah, let Clay walk and trade Draymond to Detroit. I, I hope you know the second that happens, crying in the streets. Oh my God, they're not. They're they're wearing another uniform, and we'll go through that. Nobody gave a rip about Brandon Crawford, and the second he went to St. Louis, his articles in every single paper in the Bay Area. How could the Giants do this? They let him go. Somebody who's one for eight, one for eleven, Mark. one for eleven. Yeah, yeah. Four weeks into the season, and it you know it's different with this group. And I know that uh, Brandon Crawford won the two World Series championships, and he was a forever giant and all the rest of it. But for the Warriors, there is box office involved. Sure. And, you know, Steph, Clay, and Dre, for sure, is something that you would love to keep intact. But at the same time, if you bring them all back, and if you pay Clay 24 or whatever the amount's going to be, and Draymond's already making 24 and Steph's making 55, well, there you have $103 million of your $170 million to stay below the tax threshold. So... You're paying those guys more than 60% of your total. You're not going to be a championship team. Now, can you be a championship team without them? I don't think so. So then you have to decide what's more important to you. Is it keeping the big three, quote-unquote, together for box office and letting them play out their, their time here while also letting the young players develop? And, you know, you're probably still not going to be a top-four seed. You're probably still not going to be a championship-caliber team, I, even if you bring everybody back or if you trade Draymond and Wiggins and you let Clay walk and you bring in new players does that make you a top 4 team? I don't Probably know. not either. I don't know. I like I to me that's getting ahead of ourselves. It's getting well, ahead of ourselves. For me that's the conversation. Well, but but there's no way to know that yet. You you can't say well trading them's not going to make you a top. Well, you don't know who you got back. Of course. Maybe it will. Right. I don't think being really good next year is off the table. I'll say that right now. I think they're more likely to be really bad next year than they are really good. Maybe, and that's fine. But I don't, if I'm the Warriors, I don't deal in likely. None of this is likely. Like, you, sure, you have to make smart decisions, but if you're going to be in entertainment and pro sports, you also have to be a little bit of a dreamer, I think. You got to go for it. It's all we ever ask of our owners. And Joe Lacob is not scared. He is not scared. And you have to be willing to go out there and make the move that totally blows up in your face. Um, And if you are, you might strike gold. And so I'm not saying it's likely. That doesn't even really bother me. I'm more interested in what's the effort, what's available to you. Does it at least intuitively make some sense? If you're not great, like, I mean, take the Giants as an example this year. You're not going to get a huge drumbeat, not the same drumbeat of angry fans even if they continue like they are now and stink. 8-11. and 11. They're 8-11, and 11 and they they don't look exciting, and their big signing, Blake Snell, his ERA is a bajillion. But why is nobody mad? Because on paper, what they tried to do, people went, okay, I'm in. I get it. That's different. Like So you, to me, you have to be willing to do that, and, and, and if it works, awesome, and if it doesn't, you can deal with that and, and take the ramifications. But I, I am not sold on the idea that the Warriors are totally in jail. A tough spot, but being good next year is possible, I believe. And what do you mean by being good? 
like I, being a top four seed and being a team that is a real well, threat to win the title? Because I, I don't, I don't see that. But I don't know how I could answer that because just in the last two years, uh, forty four wins meant the six seed, and then forty six wins meant you don't even get to come to the party. Right. So but both they, of those led to you being, you know, one time you won four games in the playoffs, you won six games, and then you were knocked out. And then one time you were a playing game, and that's more recent. And yeah. next year you're going to have your best player who is, it looked like he was getting tired this year. He's going to be 37 Gosh. during the next year. And uh, uh, the rest of your, your veteran core, I don't think they're getting, they're not getting younger. Every, they're not getting better. But every year is different. Like, I'm not, you know, when people go, Western Conference ain't getting any worse. I don't know that. Well, it's getting better. We don't know I that. Mean, I mean, Memphis is getting their, their young star back, and Memphis is going to be better. Are they? Houston's on the come. So you're OKC sure. and Minnesota are, are certainly going to be so you already know, intact. You already and, know who's healthy next year. You know their journey. Health, you know their you story. You never know, Mark. That's no, an unfair way to put it. It's not. I think You it's never the, know about health. Right. You've got Jimmy Butler, who's not going to be able to play in the playoffs that, now because he got hurt. That's my point. So if you ask me, can you be a top four seed, I, my answer is going to be, well, you got to tell me what else is going on with the rest of the conference. Did John ja Morant brandish a gun? Did Carl Anthony sure. Towns get traded? Did your 37-year-old get hurt again? I mean, did Draymond get suspended right. for 50 games? Did Nikola Jokic tear an ACL? I have no idea right. what the framework of this thing is going to be. What I would be interested in, because we're not going to know that until everyone comes back and the journey unfolds. Can you actually make a move or moves that builds a roster that when you look at it, you go... That can compete. I don't know if that means top four seed. Maybe right, it does. Right. Maybe it means the six seed. Maybe it means the one seed. Maybe it, maybe they're the ten seed again. I can't tell you the seed. I want to know if this off season you can build a puzzle and look at it and go, yes, that 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 could compete. I think that's the best you can do this off season. Yeah, you know that what you have right now cannot. Right, and I think you look at what you have and you think about how you can turn that into something that can compete. It is a series of dramatic moves, and I don't think that it's as simple as, you know, you trade Wiggins and some picks and maybe Moody, and you suddenly get one or two really good rotational players who take you from where you are now, a 10 seed, to being a team that can compete. I don't see that move, and, I mean, I, I'm, I'm in, encouraged to see what Mike Dunleavy thinks he can do and you bring back clay and you make that move well then i'd be i'd be thrilled to see that i don't know man i just look at the whole thing like a big pot of stew i have no idea like to say like i don't see that move like the the whole thing is such a massive ripple effect so it's like it, it's not just one move it's a series of moves and then how do those how do those people all fit together and blend together and then there's the finances and do they do, do do they have cohesion? Do do they not? You know what I mean. Like I, it, it, this off season is going to be significant. Now, I don't like I don't see a way where there's not dramatic moves. Right? How how could there not be? And I wonder about dramatic moves. Like a Wiggins trade to me. That's is... dramatic. That's a starter. You're sending yeah. off your. Okay. You're sending off someone who has scored between fourteen to nineteen points a game for you for a number of years and won a ring. Like that's significant. That's a big deal. If if they trade him, right? When they trade him, yes, I agree with you. He's getting traded. I agree. And I think uh, Moses Moody's on the move as well, and Kavon. I don't think will be back, and GP two will be interesting. He can opt in, but I I think maybe he'll be a part of something, and Chris Paul will be gone. So that right there is five players on your team this year who probably won't be around. So that would be dramatic. I I look at it this way too. It, you know, you could say, oh, it could be as simple as Wiggins leaves. You move Kaminga into that starting spot, and your starting lineup next year is Steph, Clay, Kaminga, Draymond, and TJD. Oof, that's like as non dramatic as it could get. Yeah, I I wonder this. Like, do y'all think that the Warriors have a starting lineup player who right now is not on the roster? Do you think that happens? Next no, October, I don't. Is no. there a starter yeah. who's currently not on the roster? I don't think so. I'll say yes. Yeah, I'll say yes. Um, but I hear you. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. This is going to be super challenging.